Do you want to start a business, get out of the office, achieve happiness and success while crushing life? This is Boss to Boss, the place to be for that extra motivation to get up and follow your dreams while learning from the ones who have already done it. And now for your host, Miro Wieslow. Welcome to Boss to Boss. Today's guest is a best-selling author, coach, and TEDx speaker. He is the host of Top Ranked Podcast and now book, Awaken Your Alpha, where he shares the best stories with his own strategic system and actions to be the leader in your life. It's, uh, it's crazy how social media works, huh? Adam, yep. <laughs> Adam Lewis Walker, it's a pleasure to meet you and have you on my show. How are you doing? Well, Good. Thanks for having me. Yeah, I'm ready, like you say, ready to awaken my alpha like I do every day. Some people say, oh, I've already awakened my alpha, but it is a daily thing. So, no, I'm excited to dig into this, and I know you're reasonably close to me, so this is uh, it's good to make this connection. Yeah, I, I usually, I'm like, oh, man, it's a pretty early podcast, you know, recording this thing at 10 a.m., but you've already done other podcasts. You've already been to the gym. <laughs> I mean, you 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 have awakened the alpha, huh? Yeah, I, I got I got two kids, so uh, yeah, and I we touched on. I just been to the UK as part of my book tour, so yeah, I'm naturally in a bit of a uh, an early time zone. So I'm, I'm slowly getting back into a reasonable time zone. But yeah, Sunday morning when I thought, oh, I'm lying because it's been crazy. 4:30 a.m. I thought it was at least six o'clock, so I got up all fresh. And then I saw the clock and realized it was 4.30. And I was like, oh, my <laughs> God, this is my Sunday laying. So, yeah, <laughs> it's all good, though. I got a lot done. Well, for all the for all the listeners, everybody, uh, or whether you're watching on YouTube, Facebook, or listening to the podcast, if you want to follow along, uh, see, uh, see more of Adam Lewis Walker, see his face, uh, <laughs> you could go to uh, Instagram uh, or Facebook. That's at Adam Lewis Walker. And if you want to check out the website where you have many other goodies and more uh, more content, that's ayalpha.com forward slash book. Once again, that's the letters ayalpha.com forward slash book. Yeah, as in awaken your alpha. It makes sense to me. And it, I, I like to have as, you know, as short as possible exactly. uh, address as well. Yeah, so it's uh, – but with my accent, sometimes I think, uh, yeah, people don't understand me. And I always forget that. <laughs> I always forget. I think like I make perfect sense, but no, I I get that some people don't understand my accent sometimes, and I'm not Australian. There's a lot of uh, I get that more than English uh, over here. So usually, um, I I guess people would probably know right away. But off the bat, I mean, where where are you from? Where where what brought you here? Why do you live close to me now? <laughs> so I'm originally from uh, just south of London, so Crawley near Gatwick Airport, south of England. Mm -hmm. um, in the UK and I always wanted to move to the States but when I say the States growing up that meant California uh, and the holiday type places California you know I went to Miami or I was like Disney World and stuff like so the two coasts basically um, one of my best friend moved across to San Francisco or near that area when he was 11 I visited him when I was 16 I was obsessed with basketball and um, yeah I was in the wrong country basically you know sports in schools is not that big um and no one really not a lot of people played basketball at least then so yeah I felt like I was in the wrong country a little bit and um, I wasn't that much into football or soccer as uh, everyone calls it over here um but yeah so uh, I, I just always it's kind of I always felt like I was going to move to America in some shape or form um and I did and the funny thing one I'm, I, I'm a big movie guy and mm -hmm. I didn't even realize this for a long time but um, I really like the American Pie movie. Stifler was one of my favorites back in the day. But the thing was, I didn't realize that was all shot and is all based in Michigan. And it's oh, really? Just, yeah, I didn't realize this. See, and there was only one. Some I think my friends said, "Geez, you're like you're obsessed. Like you've literally moved to northern Michigan." <laughs> yeah, I mean, you waited your whole life to come to America and to move to Michigan. I, I mean, it makes sense. It makes sense. Yeah. So I mean, I I could have almost been Stifler because I used to be a PE <laughs> teacher for ten years. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, so uh, ah. <laughs> you can see the influence. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no, I totally see the resemblance. I mean, uh, no, I, but, I look, but... the dude's a good-looking guy. 
I love Sean William Scott, but um, no, just his character Stifler, just as uh, as a funny dude. I don't know how we got talking about this, but yeah, that's what I like about interviews that just you know who knows where it's gonna go. Yeah, because uh, definitely shocked me when you didn't say any of the big cities, and it's like, <laughs> yeah, man, I'm I'm up in middle of nowhere, Michigan, and I'm like, yep. hell yeah, people's faces is funny, especially it. if I'm like over sort of Los Angeles way or talking to people in different places, mm-hmm. and loads of times, like say, people generally assume oh you've moved to america a lot of times california they assume or are you especially if you're in la when they're seeing you oh whereabouts in la are you from and all this sort of stuff and i'm like when i when i drop the northern michigan bombshell the face the eyebrows go off the head and uh yeah and uh, unfortunately a lot of times a look of disgust comes on and i'm like you know you just you shouldn't assume when then when i explain because a lot of times people think troy i explain where i'm from and you know the the environment and then it makes sense, at least to me. <laughs> I think it's a great conversation starter, and I think uh, I think there's nothing wrong with that. One, <laughs> you know, one day, one day, I wouldn't mind being a little more rural, getting away from that whole nonstop city life. Well, I know a lot of people have. So many people seem to have like um, a, a little cabin or a lake house up here. Yeah, uh, probably a lot of people from Chicago as oh, well. Yeah. Seven hours drive, just jump in there, and I mean, for the same sort of thing for the. From Chicago to up here, the the cost of a little place like that is, you know, it's a, you know, a lot of people do it. And uh, yeah, in the summer, our population is way up up here, and then we get a lot of winter birds who go who literally just drive south. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could I could see that for sure. Uh, ten years ago, about ten years ago, what happened ten years ago? And uh, oh, exactly what happened? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm so curious to uh, to hear more. I know this is definitely something you you talk about. Um, in your in your keynotes, in your um, uh, numerous in your speeches that you give uh, give out all the time. Yeah, no. So so t- ten years ago, and literally, uh, yeah, it's almost ten years ago. Not quite today, just over mm-hmm. now. It's oct- uh, not October, August, August. Was it? Blimey, August third, two thousand and eight. So just over ten years ago, I was up to that point. I mentioned I was a PE teacher, and that went really nice. Was uh, I was a high level pole vaulter, uh, competed internationally got involved with the island team set up and an international select team. And uh, I was having my best year after mm-hmm. quite a few years of little injuries and stuff. I was 28 years old, got into a big competition and uh, yeah, UK weather. It was even though it was the summer, it was horizontal rain, rough weather. And they, um, they made the, the not so bright decision to not move it indoors. So pole vaulting isn't, you know, a challenge enough. They decided to make us do it in literally just soaked and constant torrential rain and oh, so, some, yeah, someone was going to get injured, and um, it was me, basically, <laughs> to cut a long story short. Um, yeah, I was doing, like anything, on paper, like a lot of things, you know, in, in life, academically, people are smarter than you. Um, you know, certain on paper, they should be able to do certain things, and you, on paper, maybe I've got a lot of challenges against you. But in reality, once you're there, and, you know, the conditions are adverse, and it really levels the playing field. It's not just who's the best pole vaulter, who's the best at handling the adverse conditions, who wants it the most, who's willing to risk or sacrifice things. And uh, that was me at the time. I, I was, you know, as I say, I was sitting in fourth place and it's obviously as the bar goes high, it's elimination is ultimately pole vault is. Mm-hmm. So there's only four of us left, which then it turned into not just being tunnel visioned on, a, you know, a, a clear goal. It was, I need. I, I must have a medal. Was this know? the qualifying for Olympics or this, uh, this was UK Challenge Final? So this wasn't actually the qualifying for Olympics. You know, over that year it would have been the UK final. It would have been slightly later in the year or maybe even earlier. But um, and then again, my best shot was via Ireland because my granddad was Irish. So okay, I kind okay. of, in terms of competing for England, I was moving. I had gone gone the Irish route mm-hmm. because you know it's a. Uh, it's awesome fun as well. The first time I went to Ireland was um, for the Irish Championship. So you compete, um, have some Guinness and go out in Dublin, which I highly recommend. <laughs> uh, but this was um, this was almost like the, the end of a kind of a league of the season. They was trying a different thing. So, um, yeah, I was in fourth position. So I needed to get out a bigger pole, which is the sort of one you only do in the you know, great conditions, tailwind, warm, dry. And this was the opposite. Um, but I felt I needed to do it and it was worth the risk. And... Um, Ultimately, I slipped on takeoff and uh, I never had any knee problems up to that point. Um, I remember saying that that season because a lot of people, you know, have knee problems and different things. And mm-hmm. I just hadn't. And then I, as I slipped on takeoff, because it was in a puddle, it was a torn ACL. 
ripped meniscus cartilage off the bone ends, dislocated knee, mm. kneecap, and then uh, bruised the bone ends from the impact. And that was the end of pole vault. Um, and I was, you know, that was a big part of my identity in life. And um, probably, well, it kind of showed that that was one of the reasons that I was teaching because you got the whole summer off when the, you know, the athletic season was up. That's mm-hmm. when I was um, off work ultimately. And um, yeah, I was very lost for a couple of years. And um, yeah, um, you know, it's two years of operations, crutches, operations, rehab, prehab, and just. Were you still teaching at the time? This, well, this may added insult to injury. I actually just quit. If I was still teaching, the reality was I was never ill. That you know, lots of people are ill and have lots of time off work, and mm-hmm. but they've got that. But I never did, and um, I actually quit my job just at the start of the summer. So when September came round, when you'd start up, mm-hmm. I was getting paid till then. But literally, this happened in August, and uh, you know, I was pretty much uh, that's. I mean, that was another thing. If literally, if I had not handed in my notice, mm-hmm. which a lot of people, as they say, would tell you know not to do, if I hadn't handed in my notice, I would have literally been on paid leave for about two years. <laughs> <laughs> but I was oh, not. Wow. So then going into supply teaching, whilst because I'd launched my business, uh, I'd been doing my business on the side whilst I was teaching as well. So youth strength and conditioning back then, you know, 10 years ago. And um, good coaches are hard to find. And I found that out badly because I ha- had to rely on certain coaches who just were not just necessarily not the best coaches, but they're just, you know, it wasn't their business. They were unreliable. They'd turn up late. And I was on crutches and I would turn up to sessions even when I wasn't supposed to, just you know, just in case, or I had a bad feeling mm-hmm. someone was going to turn up, and actually even had a coach a bit like, well, what, you know, a bit frustrated. Why have you turned up? Are you checking up on me? Focusing on that, and I wasn't. I was, you know, I I was there because I wanted to make sure someone was there for them because I was there, and they were there like 10, 15 minutes late, and I think you know, it's, it's little things like that. And before the 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 reputation of this awesome business that I built mm-hmm. up mm-hmm. sort of went down that road, I just gave everyone their money back at a certain point because my heart wasn't in it because I was, you know, dealing with quite a bit and just um, wanted to leave it as it a high standard because I could feel little things like this getting chipped away. And um, yeah, so I just down tools on that. Unfortunately, Mm. now looking back, I just started downing tools on a lot of things and just went within myself. And that was the, you know, the slippery slope of basically depression about a, a year, a year after the accident. And um, yeah, no, it was, a, it was a tough time, and it was through that and the, the process after that that was literally battling for my alpha and going through and getting out of this that you know led me down this road and the accident. Really, if that didn't happen, I wouldn't be mm-hmm. talking to you today. Would you? Were you trying like now? Now nowadays, how do you look back at that business? Do you think that you should have kept it going? Is it something that you still think about to this day? Or I don't because it was such. It was such. Um, it was such a good. And unique, and uh, it was high quality. You know, it's high performance. It was youth strength and conditioning. It's called Sports Speed Academy, and I still am in touch with you know youth athletes that I worked with then, still now. Um, and it, the quality was always there. It never got you know. It, maybe I jumped the gun, but I was you know I was struggling to deal with life in general, mm-hmm. and this was just another thing. And when you're feeling low, obviously you, you know it, it's very hard not to uh, down tools on certain things. Um, but you know it just I always thought maybe I'd bring it back at a certain instance and I've done it in certain, but it, it's like anything. Momentum is huge. I've, I've done a lot to build up to that point and I could see it, you know, you know, being chipped away at from people who didn't really care about or did not necessarily, it wasn't their business. You know, they, they, they didn't see it like that. Um, so, it, you know, it was just, I don't regret. I, I did what I did and I, you know, maintained the, my reputation and different things. Um, so yeah, I know I don't regret it. Um, it was a great, great for what it was and, Mm -hmm. um, it's all, it's all part of the journey. That's a, that's a very interesting point you bring up. It's keeping people motivated and doing things the way you want them done when it's not their own business. Have you, have you figured that part out yet? Like, do you have, do you have uh, people working for you now? People again, I think I I had someone who was working with me, one of my coaches and it was kind of almost like the first coach and, looking you know he was so good that and it was like almost like the first coach that I don't know if I I didn't take it for granted but then when other people came into the fold Mm -hmm. it showed up blimey he is really good and it's not I mean and it's not it's more just as a person because I find the hardest things nowadays it's just people to stay by their word you know what is normal to me it just seems so 
exceptional out there nowadays. Like people just say things and don't follow through. Like coming, uh, like coming in on time. Yeah, I mean stuff like that. I mean, like that was that was the basics. I'm not going to. I didn't even get a chance. To, like, oh, I wonder how the coaching is. That, that's. The, but you've got to. You've got to be there. You've got to turn up. You've got to show up. And you know, for like, it's it's so embarrassing when you know something like that for an hour session. It might have even been 45 minutes for an hour session, and the coach is turning up like 10 minutes in. You know, and it, picture the scene. It's dark. It's rainy. They're literally. I think might have even been locked out the sports hall because the coach isn't there, and I'm there just. Just I literally I wasn't there to coach. I was there because, you know, get out the house and just just check and see if they need it. I honestly came from a point of see if there's any way I can support because, you know, they weren't expecting me. And I didn't want them to expect me to think that I'm going to be coaching or letting the people in and stuff. I just wanted to you know, drop in and see if they needed anything. Mm-hmm. I was not expecting how it unwound it that, that, you know, that literally they were not there. It's embarrassing. And also when they did turn up, the fact that their focus was on me and why am I here and, and as opposed to I think you know and that just that just showed me a lot and that was near near the end where I thought this isn't going to work as it is now um and it's not worth the you know the stress the work you know to have the, these sort of things happen so um at that point in my life anyway so tell me did you know you were gonna you know become Mr. Awaken Your Alpha like did you know this was going to happen next did, did you have any uh, idea no, uh, no, I, I would say I started, I think a real sort of turning point in, you know, awakening my alpha as well. Um, mm-hmm. Someone said in an interview, it was a funny thing, someone said in an interview, oh, kids are such a hack. My first son was born in 2010 and obviously I was on the way back anyway, but that really like, you know, certain things I was going to do, I'm like, well, you know, <laughs> he's not going to know when he's zero, he's not going to remember, but blimey, you know, I need to do these things now. The day he was born, actually on the day I founded the UK Youth Condition association so kind of taking what i had done before and mm-hmm. the good practices and then went more into an educational type body and like teaching um you know good practice and you know run some you know workshops and you know level one courses and different things but that was founded the day literally my son was born because it's just you know a kick up the arse of number one geez you're getting on number if not now when is always a good question and and you know what what do you want you know you're a role model what do you want to be known for um, you know, by your, by your family, and you don't want to be known as someone who talks about all these things you want to do or are gonna do one day, because um, it just teaches an awful, you know, an awful message to you know your sons, for example. Um, so yeah, so 20, 2010 did that, and was you know in and out of always teaching and um, like part time and doing entrepreneurial things, and then twenty thirteen co authored the book, the new rules. New Rules of Success, which became a bestseller. And that was really the origins of Awaken Your Alpha when I met the other authors in the book or co-authors. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were so varied from all over the world. Um, but we were having these sorts sort of conversations. And that was when the kind of the light bulb went off that there's a lot of value in these international conversations, you know, from people on paper don't have a lot in common, but they do have a lot in common in terms of the mindset and how they've overcome adversity. And, they're, you know, so that's when I had the idea um, and ultimately quit my final job, which I ended up in college lecturing because they're closer to mm-hmm. adults, and so closer to mindset and success and the realities of the world, not just you know learning academic stuff that a lot of times isn't that useful. What, what were you teaching? So I was still sports lecturing, and again, okay. as much as I could within the confines, doing a lot of um, mindset stuff and success, and also um, basketball coach. That's the the main thing that kept me going in that their final couple of years when I was part-time mm-hmm. was the basketball team I saw myself as just a professional basketball coach with a bit of this lecturing getting in the way um and you know I had an unbeaten season with them um it's br- brilliant fun it really was um, a good training ground to mm-hmm. work on mindset conditioning and, and all, right. all, yeah so I just you know I was you know playing motivational videos and really getting into the mindset and just it was it was I really enjoyed that and the, the kind of what came all full circle Last week, I can't believe it was only last week, mm-hmm. I actually went back to my final job, um, stayed in contact because I knew I was coming back for the book tour, and they had me in as like a you know inspirational speaker. Oh, wow. it's, it's quite a uh, it's quite a rough area or rough college, I should say. No offense if they're listening, but you know the the you know it's um, they've, before they did have a lot of problems with gangs and stuff like that. It's got a lot better now, but I went in there and um, spoke to almost five hundred students huge you know huge hall uh, probably the biggest group i've ever spoke to in one hit and um 
this is what I was surprised. I was ready for a bit of abuse because I used to teach her. I know what it's like. Um, but you could hear a pin drop, um, which was, you know, which was really awesome. And um, I'm getting some feedback now. But, you know, this is um, I say I know that I know the, the environment they're from. And I coached the Basel when I was literally in that that sports hall where I used mm-hmm. to coach Basel. None of the original students are still there because they've moved on. Um, but I knew kind of what was important and, and I thought I could get through to them with a, a clear message, especially because in that environment, they have got a lot of um, adversities, some of the students, and they let it get down on them that they, you know, they don't have certain amounts or they don't think they can do certain things. But it's I really dug into the, the biggest limitation on anyone in this room is, you know, themselves. And mm-hmm. um, yeah, so that, that was really kind of nice coming full circle. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Yeah. That's That's a great story. And uh, I could see where where everything came out of it. Like you were showing motivational videos. You already you kind of it stemmed right. It was all you're building that foundation throughout the different jobs and different things you were yeah. doing. Whether it was coaching people physically or coaching them mentally, and like it all kind of just started growing, yeah. right? And so what you you're know, doing I now. Think, I think sometimes people get stuck in their box and thinks, oh, you know, I've I've gone this far down this line, like wherever it's teaching for ten years or whatever you're doing, and think, oh, I can't. Because that would be a waste of all I've done before. Yes. But you know, so much of the stuff I do now, um, you know, I, I earned the, did the hard yards in the teaching. You know, there's never going to be a tougher audience than you know, teenage girls, for example, on a Monday morning, and you know, some of the groups, and just that consistency and turning up, and literally, you know, they, you have to perform on that day. They don't give you any kind of. If you were great last week or last lesson, great. But if you're if you're off form on that day. They will let you know about it quick. If you're not entertaining on that day, then it doesn't matter how much great information you've got. It, it's not going to get through. So that's something that, you know, no matter what group I speak to now, all I can say is usually <laughs> I've done worse, as it were. If You know, I've been through more adverse situations than that. I worked in pupil referral units mm-hmm. where they actually where it's all the kids from the area have been excluded from schools have actually you know gone they put them all together which is not the best idea and then i've gone into these environments and they are quite tough and actually to the even beyond that where there's secure units where it's basically like a prison um and even at the time i thought you know a lot of people wouldn't take this in terms of the they were surprised that i was open to going in there but i thought well you know if, if i'm up for the challenge you know that there's if you're expecting that this is a you know a, an unwinnable scenario well any any impact i can have will, will be good and uh, you know if no one else is up for it, I'm open to it. So I went in there and actually that was again, quite rewarding. So everybody else, uh, everybody tuning in, listening, watching, don't forget, uh, it's at Adam Lewis Walker and the website is a Y alpha.com forward slash book. You can, uh, keep, keep up with us and see uh, further info, read up more about uh, everything. Oh, ho, oh, ho. <laughs> what's this? What's this? And, and we have an ex boss, two boss, about- exclusive here if you're watching the video we got the book here awaken your alpha unfortunately i don't have a copy here myself so i can't be showing mine off on my end but uh there it is the book. instant um the the the, yeah, Kindle version. I'll shoot the instant Kindle version so you can have a lot. i'd love to know what you think about that we'll have the links we'll have the links uh in this episode so if you're uh wherever you're listening you know scroll down or open up the full description and you can get the links to check out the book as well Wow. So quite, quite, quite a story. That's a, that's a mouthful and a handful. And I guess the last part I'm curious about why, why entrepreneurism? Like why, why did you want to work for yourself now? And why didn't you go back to working, you know, as a teacher? Like why? Um, the, 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 the biggest issue I had with teaching for me, and it's a purely individual thing. I, 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 you know, I love teachers. A lot of my friends are still teaching. Um, and you know, if it was for me, I would have I would have been quite happy. My wife's a teacher. She, you know, she's she's set. She's absolutely committed and just loves all aspects of it. Um, for me, the issue I had, and again, I know there's uh, there's ways around this, but it was the lack of performance related pay. And I'm not. It's not about the money. It's the you know, entrepreneur is you know lives and dies by the performance. Whereas a teacher, you you get huge variations in the most legendary teacher. Or get paid about this much. The worst teacher, and unfortunately there are, who just literally, it's like someone's forcing them to be there, and I can't stand that, uh, they will get paid the same. And it's mm-hmm. very hard for teachers to get sacked, uh, you know, and it's, 
I, I don't know. I just found it demotivating. And also, I know this is down to the individual as well, but the certain repetitive nature of, you know, um, lessons and curriculums. Yes, you, it's up to you. You can tweak it and change it all the time. But the reality is, you know, uh, you know, a year seven basketball lesson, lesson one is the same generally. I mean, there's loads of different ways you do it, but it, it was I never that's one thing when I first started is the, 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 the relentless and repetitive nature of certain aspects. And but ultimately what killed it for me is the um, meetings for meetings sake. I was like a caged animal. Like when it comes to a lack of performance related pay. Oh, sorry. Mm. I'm just and this. So this is just I think my wife is calling me. Let me get, turn that off. <laughs> Um, yeah, no. So it was it was the meetings for meetings' sake, and um, where the common sense goes out the window. When there's a lot of in, in school environments, there's a lot of um, doing things for the sake of things, ticking boxes to tick a box. Like you've got to have five meetings today, or whenever it is. What is the outcome? What are we trying to do? I love meetings. I love me no, some meetings. No, yeah, no, no one knows. And then I think, oh, some of the scenarios. I mean, there's hundreds I can pull from. But just to give you an idea. There's when when things like this happen. Uh, this is actually in a college environment. Mm -hmm. When there's a meeting at the end of the day, so we're all completely done. There's a meeting, and it's it's keeping me from my family time. And they've actually said that you know the next half hour of the meeting is literally for A, B, and C. And everyone in the room, including me, including the person doing it, knows I have nothing to do with A, B, and C. It's like completely separate. So I'm literally, I'm the sort of person as well, as why I had some conflicts in these environments, mm -hmm. would say, oh, oh, no, I see common sense. Oh, this has, you know, this sex, this has nothing to do with me. It's not, that's, that's not even debate. And there wasn't a debate. Is it okay if I, if I head out because this doesn't apply to me? Nope. And literally, they, the answer would be, yes, it doesn't apply to you. You have to stay for the end of the meeting. Literally, it's like signing in. It's like treating you like little children. And I was just, I'm like, you would... You literally, if that's happened to me, you must lose so many good people because you've got no common sense to say that makes sense. Go home, see your family, as opposed to now there's this this like resentment and just issues around that. And I'm like, I like teaching. I don't like this, <laughs> you know, and it's just things like that are not going to change in uh, these sorts of environments. You, you'll get better schools, better colleges where there'll be less of it. But there's always, you know, the inset training days where lots of teachers are literally sitting there sleeping with their eyes open, but they have to go through it. The most yeah, is irrelevant, but they have to go through these things. And, you know, you only get one life. Once you add these up over the years, you know, I just something I could not stomach and live with. Um, and also it's that, that, that lack of performance related pay. And I know over there that we do have like advanced skills teachers and there's avenues you can go. But, you know, the, the, the physical teaching of, uh, you know, sports and PE, which I love, um, as opposed to, yeah, you can progress and we're going to start making you wear a suit and you'll start just not teaching. You'll actually just be managing. And I'm just like, yeah, that's not I, I can see where this goes. Mm -hmm. And I don't like any of that. All right. All right. Well, let's just say. <laughs> You can't know it, man. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I totally, I totally agree. I, uh, I could see exactly where you're, where you're looking, and, and for someone, for someone like me, that I was sitting there, and I, I was the one with the suit. I, I, that, that's the kind of job I took. I was sitting there in a cubicle, and, uh, you know, not, not to compare that to being a superintendent of a school or however you called it over there, but you know, I. At that point, I was like, all right, well, this is it. I'm going to listen to my other superiors and I'm just going to sit here in my cubicle and, you know, pound away on my computer and slave away. And it just, it wasn't for me. And, and uh, but for some people, you know, that, that's what they thrive in. For yeah. the person, for the person that was in my position though, a year and a half ago, what would you say? What would you tell them if they should get up and do something about it or whether or not, you know, because this is not easy. I, I know, I know we're kind of, we're making it sound like, you know, it's, it's been great. It's been. Oh no, it, I, I, but... I had real tough time transitioning. As I say, I was part-time entrepreneur, part-time employee for a good few years. And that was the hardest time. And there's the, the only time to, to cut your fish or cut bait and to make that decision is basically you and when you're ready or when you're not even ready I should say but you just decide you're going to do it in some shape or form because employee or entrepreneurs we just touched on there's nothing wrong with either but it's you've got to know what you are what you are at your gut and your core and that's like you know, a great man to me said you know same thing employee or entrepreneur and if you kind of fumble over that answer or you really struggle with that that's we need to do some work because if you're 
the transition phase, it's supposed to be a transition. If you're still in that transition phase for years, that's not a transition. You're just a part-time employee, a part-time entrepreneur, and you're going to be going up against full-time professionals and you are an amateur in both, mm-hmm. meaning you're not going to be happy. And that's the I found myself in that phase and it was a tough, painful phase. And as soon as I committed and to one birthed, or the other, yeah, then I was a lot happier and it seemed easier because being split in 50-50 or not even 50-50 is really tough. And then as soon as, whichever one it was, as soon as you go 100%, it's you know life's a lot simpler and i'm all about simplifying life so anyone listening to this what i would Mm -hmm. say is just the awareness and i'll talk about this in the tedx talk and in the book the whole first third of the book is all about a personal awareness because as we've said there's no judgment here there's no right or wrong but you've got to be clear on what you do and don't like and what is the fit for you but and also be brutally honest with yourself where are you currently not like you know sugarcoating it for family or friends to let people know that you're doing okay but where you personal satisfaction of where you currently are and if there it does illuminate certain areas that you are not even close to happy in why and what's the issue and also then you've got to do that work to where do you want to go you know your vision can be as vague as a, a vision it can be as clear as a specific thing mm-hmm. like moving country or becoming an entrepreneur or whatever it is or you know getting a gold medal in something whatever it is but having that and then where are you currently? Where do you want to be? Or who do you want to become? And they, they could be very similar or yes. it could be completely two different people. Mm-hmm. So you've established the gap, which is very powerful. And a lot of people aren't aware of that gap without, you know, they just, they just think, oh, I'm not, I'm not where I want to be. I'm upset and just leave it at that and don't do anything about it. But once you've established that gap, you need to take full ownership of that. We don't care about environments or who's done what to you or this is why I'm not where I want to be. Take ownership for the good and the bad and then yeah what can you do to close that gap and that's it either walking in that direction daily or you're you know you're walking the other way you can't stand still and a lot of people try to maintain which is a i say rarely say things are mistake but that's a huge mistake because you can't maintain you're either you know growing or dying you're either Mm -hmm. going in that direction or not and if you have no vision who knows which you're doing steps in all sorts of directions but it means you're staying still and i know you can't stay still but you're going forward you're growing you're dying it's a mess so that's that's something I believe. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, so I guess one thing, uh, listen, they they could get is to read your book or listen to your podcast. <laughs> and and no, I mean, n- I'm not trying to like, you know, shamelessly plug it in there, but it, it's about opening yourself up, right? Awakening yourself. Yeah, I mean, some and of, some of the realizing because yeah, when you're plug- stuck in that day to day environment, right? You're, that's all you're doing is that day to day, day to day, chugging along. I think along. we all need to, again, I don't want to get morbid, but we all need to be very, um, I'm very aware of mortality as well. And, you know, in a, in a sense, in a positive way that, you know, and gives me a sense of urgency. You know, I don't have a death wish or anything like that, but I, I'm, I'm, I think it's cocky or complacent to assume you're going to, you know, die at 80 plus in a nice scenario with all your family members around you. You know, that, hey, that's something like that's the goal, but, you know, you there's other things that it's, it's not guaranteed. And, we all need to have that urgency that, you know, it isn't guaranteed. And someone said, reading this book, this is, you know, a must read for anyone who wants to step up in their life with confidence and vision of being a conscious leader. And uh, again, other people might, if you take the mindset of, well, I'm not in a leadership role. Yeah, you are. Everyone is. This is personal leadership. Already, if you don't think you're in a leader, not in a leadership role, that's a huge indicator of the problem because you need to lead your life, not be a passenger and, be always just reacting to environments and things and you know being on the back foot you need to get some clarity and take these daily actions and that's another thing don't don't save this perfect action for tomorrow do something today no matter how small and that's when you start getting momentum and start going in the right direction okay so that's an interesting way to look at it not uh, some people bring it up and uh definitely in a similar sense so how, how do you i want to hear you how do you look at it every day when you wake up are you like do you take it just as this day right now and that you might not have tomorrow and that's why you kind of give it your all? Is is that what you're trying to say? Well, yeah. I mean, from a happiness and fulfillment mm-hmm. perspective, a very simple thing that I've done over the last two years that's definitely had an impact for me, so that's what I can go from, is no matter how well or challenging that day has been, it's actually more important to ask this question on the challenging days. Um, at some point, usually later in the day, mm-hmm. what can I do – today to make today great and by asking yourself such a simple question but if you do that consistently so it, and again this where it gets very individual because the, and the distinction is not what would i like to do 
because then people start being stupid with it and saying things like, oh, go to Disneyland and do this and do that. And what can you actually do today to make today great? And a lot of times it's very simple things like go for a walk around the block, walk down to the lake, have a game of table tennis with my wife, you know, play with the boys, whatever it is for you. But it's very individual. And um, it just takes away excuses because, okay, and then you may have had like eight hours where it was a, it was a challenge today. Mm -hmm. But then what is, you know, current performance You've made your day great in your own way. And so that's the last in feeling emotion of that day. So you had a great day. Before you know it, if you ask that question every day, great days, and then you've had a great life and, you know, a great month. And that's, it sounds so simple, but it has definitely helped me be more present um, and, you know, just keep an eye on what, what is important and what are you doing this all for? Because, again, people are quite ambitious. It's very easy to turn your life into an endless to-do list that you're ticking off that you might not even feel satisfied with. Um, and there's never, an, especially in entrepreneurial sense, you know, you might feel like you've never done enough. You can always do more. Um, so you've got to get some perspective and it's an, a nice way to, um, you know, put a bow around each day. And, and if one of these days is going to be your last day at the end of the day. So on the day when that happens, if you've had a great day, you know, that that's, that's a good thing. Yes. And so if the, the day is almost over and your day sucked, what are you going to do about it when you ask yourself that question? It's already 9 p.m. at night. Exactly. And it's, I like it because it's what are you, what can you do? What are you going, you know, what are you going to do is what can you do? So it, even at nine o'clock, cause again, people, there's any half chance to get an excuse or a reason why they can't have a great day. People are up for that, but what can you do today to make it great? So whether you ask that at six o'clock in the evening or nine o'clock or mm -hmm. 10 o'clock, whatever it is. And it may be a very short thing. It may be jumping on the phone to a loved one for 10 minutes, 20 minutes. There's it's whatever it is for you, but it's excuse proof. Mm -hmm. so that and that's why i'm a big I, I like things that are excuse proof because as i say you can have you know results or you can have excuses you can't have both oh, i love that i love that and now for our listeners favorite segment of the show welcome to the round with no name because they're all taken <laughs> you get exactly five seconds to initiate an answer with uh, for every question that's coming up uh ooh, ooh. you 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 may know a few of the questions you may not uh, I'm definitely gonna definitely gonna throw you some curveballs. I'm gonna make sure you're fully awake after this one. If we exceed the five seconds, my producer he's lurking the he's lurking in the background. We we got to deal with him. So I don't want to deal with him. Uh, let's just you know don't think about it too much. Just throw him out there. Just throw him out. Any questions? Um, no, I'm just gonna get my video going for this because this could be funny. Oh, it is gonna be great. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. You ready to go? Let's do okay. this. Second question. Okay. Good. What is your favorite book? Man Search for Meaning, Victor E. Frankel, backed up by Relentless, Tim S. Grover. That's a boss to boss first. I thought for sure you were going to say your own book. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that one's good as well. <laughs> You're stranded on an island. What is the one item you want with you? Oh, ah. A your boat. Wife. Your wife is watching. <laughs> 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 Who has been or is your greatest mentor? I don't have one. I don't have one. Um, you don't have one. Okay. Um, from afar, I'm Robert Greene from afar in the writing sense, in specific Specific areas, yeah, I have different ones, but from a writing sense, Robert Green. We're gonna have to talk about this show now. You definitely exceeded your limits. How... Tell me when offers. You'd say right. Count, is, give me a countdown. I'll give you an answer. Is, if I get is, is entrepreneurism a fad? Yes. How do you feel about voice being the future, specifically podcasts and audiobooks? Yes, <laughs> big. You, you think so? Huge. Okay. How do you drink your coffee? Ooh, almond milk. Do no you sugars. do you buy a specific one, or is do you just make one at home? I have the best coffee in Roger C. is in my basement. Costa Coffee. I got the pods. My whole case was filled with these Costa pods from England. You can't get them over here. Yeah, Costa Coffee with almond milk. Beautiful. Beautiful. You got a, you got a Sunday. You got a Sunday one. I never heard of it. Oh, it's, it's, it's good. It's our favorite coffee in England. They're, they're about every ten meters in England. All right. Well, uh, when we meet up in Chicago, I, uh, I'm, I'm I'll be waiting for one. 
Awesome. What is the one item you consume every day, whether it's drinking it, whether it's eating it, or something maybe you wear? You need it with you every day. It makes you you. It makes you different. Yeah, I would have said coffee. That's not every day, but <laughs> just because I don't know. But um, no, uh, honestly, and I, this is the, the wrong, the separate answer, nothing. My one item, uh, my family, because... I, I like to go minimalism. I like to think I can handle without anything. And when you rely or depend on one thing, then, you know, potentially you're going to be upset because that can be taken away. So yeah. that's a fresh answer. I love it. If you had unlimited amounts of money right now and you had to start a business, any business, what would it be? Running huge multi-speaker events in huge venues all over the world consistently um, probably once a month to be fair because I wouldn't want to be away from my family my family would come with me for a lot of these trips travel the world on loop alright that's a great way to do it how do you feel about white socks with black shoes oh no not the best not the best depends if you can see them <laughs> I've been to a lot of sports so I'll let you off if you can't see them but yeah I, I, so it's okay if you hide it right it's okay I think I think maybe the other way around is worse. White white shoes with black socks. Is that, yeah, you said it the other way. Yeah, I don't know. I didn't even think about it that way. That's pretty bad. Yeah, but even <laughs> the, what spring to mind when you're saying that is I tell you something. I definitely am like whoa, so- sandals with socks. No. Man, I I don't know I don't know, but I uh, once in a while it's I dig I dig. I'm it's actually, I, you you can't see what I'm doing right now, but. You know what? Since you Doing brought since, since public, you brought it up, know. since you brought it up, there are white. <laughs> that is awesome. Yes, I yes. Well in my because that is exactly what I was talking about. <laughs> I do that as well in my house. At yes, that's, that's different, and that's oh, not out in man. public. That's so, like yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I was waiting for this day. I was waiting, waiting. <laughs> Sixty plus awesome. episodes in. I was waiting. One time, I was actually recording a podcast and. Um, I think it was like super early in the morning. So I still had like uh, sweatpants or boxers on. I can't remember. And, yep. and I just, I've had a dress shirt on and I literally walked out. My girlfriend was still like getting out of bed and she's like, all right, all right. I see. It's a party, party in the bottom, you know, party on the bottom, yep. professional up top. But you, know, you can't, you can't really see anything below. So <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. <laughs> well, you're there. I'm here. My producer, I guess, fell asleep. So we're good. We're good. We made it through the round entrepreneurism you said it's a fad why is that well it's again it's because i had to have a yes or no answer well that's what i thought anyway it's very popular right now mm. and this comes back to what we've been talking about it's not for everyone but it's very you know it's again it's, it comes back to my whole thing of awaken your alpha don't follow society's or someone else's definition of success because that is the worst thing ever and you're going to be unhappy. So that I do think some people are going to get sucked in and think, yeah, entrepreneurism is the route to happiness, which I do think is, you know, for a lot of people it will be. But there are going to be people who it's not. And, that you know, there are some legendary jobs out there. And that's why I never say never. You know, some of the jobs out there, they sound more like entrepreneurs than your classic entrepreneur. And, and I've heard and some of my, you know, I know entrepreneurs who well, I was shocked when they, like, they got a job again. But then when I heard what their job was, it sounded more entrepreneurial than what they were doing before. So I think putting that label on it and just um, and thinking you're going to be happy because you're being an entrepreneur is is a bit short sighted. You need to you know look into your core of what are you all about and what would make you happy. And if that's I think entrepreneur or employee is not necessarily the deciding factor. You know, if someone wants to give me a job where I do literally these sort of things mm-hmm. and they pay me a consistent load of wedge with bonuses and stuff or whatever then how's that really different to what I'm doing? So, I mean, and then, you know, if someone, you know, bought up Awaken Your Alpha and uh, I was still doing exactly what I'm doing but someone else had all the, the overheads and, uh, you know, so I, I just think it's not that simple, but I also think, um, don't, yeah, don't get sucked in. It's this, I think getting sucked into entrepreneurism because it's the hot thing right now or a fad is the same as getting sucked into, you know, being on some reality TV show, you know, a lot of unhappy people potentially, um, but you're seeing it on and you think that's the route to go because yeah. society's bigging them up or something like that or, you know, fame for fame's sake or thinking that's going to make you happy if you're not happy and you, you're still going to be the same person. You might just have a lot more money and everyone to know 
that you're not happy or know of you. So, I, yeah, I just think whatever success is to you is fine, but just, you know, really define that and be clear about what it is you're getting yourself in for. All right. Well, once again, everybody, that's Adam Lewis Walker, his book and podcast, Awaken Your Alpha. Be sure to check him out at Adam Lewis Walker on social media as well as his website, ayalpha.com forward slash book, where you'll find all the goodies you need. Uh, the, the mic is yours, Adam. If you have any closing thoughts, it's uh, it's been a pleasure having you on. Yeah, oh, well, just uh, one of the things I, I talk about towards the end of the book, and I think we, we touched on aspects of it, is just legacy. Um, you know, and it comes to, it comes to mortality. It's the same. You know, we're all it's all the same for all of us. Um, and linked to that, we talked about you know pleasing other people or following certain things, maybe with not that the, as much clarity as you need. Do something or do things that you respect yourself for first. You know, the first person you should be looking to please is yourself, and then the rest all just flows. If you're doing certain things in your life that you don't respect yourself for, then you, you the powers within you to stop or change or make mm-hmm. the tweaks. And again, that's a very individual assessment. And you know, if you're happy and respecting yourself for what you're doing, that flows into all areas of your life, and and it's the difference as well between. You know, doing a lot of work and being absolutely burnt out and ready to just burn the bridges as I did before. And if you're inspired and being pulled towards something, that feels like not a lot of work. Um, it's the difference between being motivated by desperation mm-hmm. and inspiration. And you can, you know, this is the reason why some people thrive in certain situations and some people really struggle. And so you've got to make sure, you know, you're not trying to stick a round peg in a square hole. And that's only it's, it's an individual thing that you you got to do and just you know if you were if today was your last day what would people say about you what would they say at the you know at the ceremony what would they say after what stories would they tell about you in the bar what you know what impact have you had on people not what impact do you wish you've had what is the reality of what they would say about you today and not thinking oh i'm going to do all these good things well if it was you know the, if it was cut today what would they actually say about you would they the basic things would they say they were a good person would they say i had you know tell funny stories about how they enjoyed time with you or would they be saying other things that maybe aren't so nice to hear but you've got to hear them because that's what they're going to say oh that is the reality and if you don't like the sort of things you mm-hmm. that be said you know you're not dead yet so you've got a chance to change it <laughs> that's a perfect way to put it what would they say i'm not even going to bother try to top any of that Adam Lewis Walker, it's uh, been a pleasure talking to you. been a pleasure having you on. I uh, can't wait to talk further uh, down the road. I say thanks for having me. Cheers. That is all for this episode of Boss to Boss. Your next step is to visit boss2boss.com, where you will find proven techniques followed by professionals to help you make that next step. Again, that is boss, the number two boss.com. And remember, the time is now.